Hey everyone, Alex from My Paleo Pal here. If you're brand spanking new to paleo, you might want to listen up. You're probably wading through all of the information asking where's the short list, and that's where I come in. I'm going to let you know just what to do and why you want to do it. We're going to go through the ins and outs of the paleo diet to clear up any confusion right off the bat so you can be on your way to optimal health. Before we begin, a note of caution. You may be tempted to turn this video off because a lot of the information you're going to hear goes against all of your preconceived notions about health. Don't shut it off. This has changed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. The paleo diet may seem unconventional, but it is extremely powerful. So what is paleo and why is it called that? The paleo diet is modeled after the way our ancestors ate in the paleolithic era before agriculture and the domestication of animals. Back then we were hunter-gatherers. Our diet was mostly what we could hunt, fish, pick from plants, or find in the ground. We were lean, agile, and muscular. Think of our genetic evolution as a 100-yard line. The first 99.5 yards are how long we spent as hunter-gatherers. That last half yard represents our evolution after the agricultural revolution, where our diet radically shifted but our genes were still the same. Genetically speaking, we are still hunter-gatherers. The hunter-gatherers were notoriously fit, strong, and agile, but today we are sick, tired, depressed, and fat. So how do we take it back to the roots and defy the evolution of man? It is believed that during this time, five food groups that are commonly consumed in the world today were not readily available. Sugar, grains, dairy, legumes, and processed foods in general. Let's dive into each group. Added sugar is the first element on the no list. Today, it sneaks in everywhere from salad dressing to canned soups. Sugar sends your blood sugar spiking and dipping, which will prevent your body from burning fat efficiently. Sugar is addictive and promotes overeating. A large amount of scientific studies link refined sugar to obesity and other modern health issues. Sugar comes in many forms and its effect is complex. For now, just remember that refined sugar is on the no list, no exceptions. Second on the no list is grains. On the paleo diet, we avoid grains for three main reasons. First of all, they contain anti-nutrients, toxic substances that prevent your body from absorbing the nutrients it needs and that create autoimmune and digestive irritation. Grains also contain inflammatory proteins like gluten. They damage your gut lining and cause inflammation throughout the body. Like sugar, grains also cause the body to release insulin, which triggers fat storage. We want to avoid drastic blood sugar dips and spikes so that our energy levels stay constant. Lastly, the nutrient content of grains is inferior to other foods, especially in the 13 vitamins and minerals most lacking in the U.S. diet. As a species, we humans have no requirement for cereal grain. We can obtain all the required nutrients from meats, fish, seafood, poultry, fresh fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Fun fact, corn is a grain, not a vegetable. Avoid this as well. Dairy is the third no on the paleo diet. From an evolutionary perspective, we avoid it because our ancestors didn't have it. How do we know our hunter-gatherer ancestors didn't drink milk? Well, have you ever tried milking a wild buffalo? Good luck! It's only at the dawn of agriculture 10,000 years ago and the subsequent domestication of dairy animals that dairy became part of the human diet. So, just like grains, dairy is extremely recent in our evolution. It's a newcomer food. We also avoid dairy because no other species drinks the milk of another animal throughout adult life. Isn't that weird? Not convincing enough for you? Processed cow's milk contains growth hormones, bacteria, and antibiotics and also produces a strong insulin response. Another telltale sign that something is wrong with dairy. 
65% of all people on the planet can't consume it without experiencing some form of digestive distress. More than half of the human population is lactose intolerant. So what about calcium? Dairy, as the ultimate source of calcium, is a myth created by the dairy industry. You can find many paleo-friendly sources of calcium, including salmon, sardines, spinach, and almonds. The next culprit to avoid is legumes. Legumes, like beans, peas, and lentils, are the fourth group on the no list. Even though they are traditionally regarded as healthy, they actually contain the same anti-nutrients that grains do. Legumes are often high in phytic acid, which prevent nutrient absorption from other nutrient-dense foods. This mostly becomes a problem when the diet is rich in legumes and a bulk of the calories in your day come from them. Last but not least, the paleo diet bans any kind of processed foods created by the modern food industry. Obviously, all this junk was not available to our ancestors. Processed foods are filled with artificial ingredients, sweeteners, and preservatives. They are high in calories but nutritionally poor in vitamins and minerals. Processed foods are also high in added sugar and low in fiber which promotes overeating, hormonal imbalance, and obesity. Processed foods have become such a pillar of our modern lifestyle that it can seem almost impossible to live without them. But trust me, it is possible and eliminating them will have a huge impact on your health. If you're completely new to paleo, you're probably a little bit confused right now. You're probably thinking, I eat those things on a daily basis though, what's left? Now that we've covered what we can't eat, let's focus on what we can. Let's have a look at the paleo food pyramid. You'll notice it looks very different from the standard USDA food pyramid you've seen before. At the bottom of the pyramid, you'll find animal products. These are one of the main sources of energy in the paleo diet. It includes all types of meats, such as beef, chicken, pork, and lamb. It also includes fish and seafood, which, by the way, are recommended to have at least three times per week for omega-3 content. Eggs are also very nutritious and a healthy source of protein and fat. When choosing these products, Paleo focuses on grass-fed, pasture-raised, wild-caught proteins because they are nutritionally superior and more sustainable. In the middle of the pyramid, you'll recognize the fruits and the vegetables. All are acceptable on the Paleo diet. It's recommended that you eat a lot of green vegetables such as kale, collards, broccoli, and cabbage. You can also have root vegetables like beets, carrots, and squash. Starches like sweet potatoes and plantains are also allowed. Fruits are great as well, but should be consumed in lower quantities because of their higher sugar content. At the top of the pyramid, you'll find nuts and seeds, which should be eaten in moderation as well. We're going to include a decent amount of healthy fats in each of our meals. This will come from avocado, coconut products, olive oil, ghee, tallow, and so on. So why exactly would you want to follow this diet? Well, it's not a magic cure to any or all things, but it's a very powerful tool in taking back your health. First of all, it can be a very effective method of weight loss. The logic behind it? Well, you'll be eating more filling and nutrient-dense foods, so you'll be feeling satisfied after each meal. Your blood sugar levels will start to balance out and you can address hormonal issues as well. This also means that you can stop your sugar cravings once and for all. The best part about the weight loss is that it's easily sustained. Paleo is not a crash diet or a quick fix or some sort of fad. This is a way to quit counting calories for good with lasting results. The paleo diet also eliminates inflammatory foods which help people who suffer from a myriad of symptoms from chronic pain to asthma. Many people treat autoimmune disease with a paleo diet, successfully reverse the effects of diabetes, or just clear up their skin. Finally, eating whole, nutrient-dense foods will give you better energy throughout the day. This will often improve the quality of the sleep you get as well. Combined with stress management, this shift in diet can really help you live life to the fullest while feeling your best. So how can you get started? Well, it's best to just dive right in. Clear the pantry and get cooking. 
eating a balanced portion of meat, vegetables, and healthy fats is as simple or as complicated as you make it. 30 days test run on paleo will be enough to show you in what ways it can benefit you no matter your background or your goals. Having a support system while transitioning to paleo is absolutely crucial. Thousands of people are posting their meals every day to the My Paleo Pal app. They're there to inspire you with what's on their plate. You are not alone. Come join a like-minded community who will always offer you encouragement and support. If you need extra guidance and support, we run a challenge group called the 30 Day Kickstart at the beginning of each month. You'll learn more about this later. The Paleo Diet is a long-term solution to many modern health problems and the key to you living your most vibrant and healthy life. If you have a solid foundation set up and a willingness for a new experience, you are ready to go on this journey. Just remember the five no's and best of luck to you.